Details object later on, we're going to come to that, what it all means. So we're going to select again, it's here, we get one, two, three, four images. I select them all, drag and drop it into my scene. Okay, and I'm going to call out uh, my laser. Okay, and there it is. I can maybe place it here. We can also scale it minus one. Okay, let's frame to that object, so we have it there. You can put the laser there. What we're going to do, we're going to duplicate it. Bring it down. So now we have two laser objects. Yeah. So we don't, uh, we cannot sneak uh, under it. Okay. And you put the the second laser object as a child of the first one, so yeah. that when you move the first one, they move together. Yeah. So I don't have to multi-select, or I don't have to uh, separate select them, move them around. I can do it in one shot. Okay. So when when I press play now, what we're going to see is we see the lasers here, and we see the clock table object here. Awesome. Okay. We already got some animation in the game. Exactly, it's, it's really easy and fun. So this is our first uh, part. What we want to do is now actually duplicate that. Mm -hmm. Because now we can uh, you know, select here the environment and I don't need the, the two first objects here, the uh, intro. So this is the object I want to duplicate over time in my scene. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make those two objects, those, uh, the collectible, uh, the fuel can, a child of that uh, level and the laser too. So there's always going to be a fuel can and lasers yeah. in every segment of this level we're generating on the fly. And what we're going to do is on the fly then say, when we uh, enter one of those uh, prefabs here, activate or deactivate the can mm -hmm. uh, or activate the laser. So we always have, it's always different. It's never been, it's never the same. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have this uh, game object here and uh, save this. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call that like maybe a prefab one or something. Prefab one, and we can now duplicate this, okay, and I call it prefab two, okay, and I can move it to here, see, so now I have two objects and I can pull them, so I can later on move one of the objects, but let's first with the, start with the character here, okay, so okay, I'm going to go to my character here, and I'm going to make my first animation just like I did uh, with, the, uh, with my fuel can, I can go here to the run animation, okay? And you guys select all the images as part of the run. Yeah. So we have here run one, two, three, four, five, up to thirteen. I'm gonna select them. First and last one. Mm -hmm. We're gonna drag and drop it into our scene here. Okay. And again, it's gonna ask for an animation, and I'm gonna call it uh, uh, run. Okay. And I'm gonna go here to my run character. What we see here. It creates a file run and an animator. Okay, I'm going to quickly explain what it actually is. Okay, so when I press play, what we see is here, we see the animation playing. Okay, mm -hmm. and the animation that has created a file run and it plays those uh, animation file. It plays those sequence of images. With my character selected here, I'm going to go here, what we see is here we see the animator. The animator defines which animation will be playing at what time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I select that animator and I go to the animator, you know, we nicely see it and it's playing the run animation. It's visual, st visual stating which animation is playing. Mm -hmm. When I double click on that, we see the animation here run in it. Uh, click here, it's run. It's all automatically generated for us when we drag the run in. Yeah, nothing to do. So it's super easy. And orange means or uh, means that is the default animation that we'll be playing when we start the That's game. That's when it starts first. Yeah. So look here now when I press play, I see my character running, okay? But it's not moving forward, there's no physics applied to that. No, it's we simply just animated in yeah. a way. So let's start with that. What we're gonna do is select our character here, okay? I can rename this here, I'm gonna call it uh, character. Okay, it's easy to find that in my game. And what I wanna do is I wanna add some gravity to it because later on I wanna jump and mm -hmm. add some uh, force up to it and then we're gonna land down. So we're gonna have to code our own physics engine now? No. <laughs> oh, Unity makes that easy? That Unity makes it easy. There's a box to D uh, fully included uh, for it and just apply to it and that's it. This, uh, we made it easy. Awesome. So look here, how we do that actually? Let me show you here. Okay, we have our character. I'm going to add a component. We go to physics. Uh oh, we have to watch out here. We have physics and physics 2D. Okay, physics 2D is when you're really going to make uh, for 2D games and physics is uh, the, the physics for more 3D games. Of course, you can combine that in games. But I'm going to use here the 2D physics and I'm going to add a rigid body 2D, mm -hmm. just like gravity. So look, when I look at my game here and I press play now, what's going to happen is our character falls down 
forever. Okay, I can show you that here, it's really fun. Okay, when I zoom out here, here, press play, or a character falls down. Because he has gravity, but there's nothing for him to hit yet, because nothing else has any gravity or physics. Yes. So what we're going to do is look here, our character, uh, or here, we can select our uh, level here. Okay. You know, delete the other prefab, I don't need it actually yet. So what we can do, we're going to add here a little uh, physics to it. So add physics 2D. We don't have to add gravity. The object will stand still. We're going to add a collider to it. Mm -hmm. So look, I can do here an edge collider. Okay. Or I should add uh, actually something that I can see because it's a, it's a little dot actually. So I can actually physics 2D. Let's add here uh, a box collider to it. Mm -hmm. But it actually it's just, uh, it's very small here. You see it's here. Because it's, uh, it's around the uh, game object, the empty yeah. one that we made. Yeah. So what we can do is hold on shift, or we can here, the size here, move it bigger. Scale it yeah. up in its X and Y. Yeah, so we can then nicely make it uh, the size, okay, like this. And let's put the, the, the center a little bit down, so we're going to place it nicely here. Mm -hmm. So what we see it's here on the floor. So when I press play, or I character falls down, but it doesn't hit it with it. Why is that? Our character needs also a collider. It's not just a floor. Both have to collide against each he has other. Yes, physics, but he's not colliding with anything to it because he doesn't have the code for collision. Yeah. So we're going to select here my character. I'm going to add a component, physics 2D, and I'm going to add a box collider to it. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, also uh, make it a bit smaller. So the size, we're going to make it smaller here. And the Y2. So making the collision box around the character a bit tighter. Yeah. So look, now when I press play, what we're going to see is the character nicely falls down and hits the floor. Excellent. Okay, super simple. It's exactly what we wanted. Yeah. The next step what we want to do is actually move that character forward. Okay, how are we going to do that? Also, uh, we're going to do that to actually through a script. Okay, look here. You're going to have to import some scripts. Uh, you can create scripts really simple. I hear create, Java or C Sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, this class will be mainly using uh, C Sharp. I will use one JavaScript uh, to show the possibility of that. Yeah. It's also worth noting that you can mix and match. You can have some objects with JavaScripts and some objects with C-sharp scripts. Um, you can mix and match, but they cannot communicate uh, yes. with each other. Yeah. They beat black boxes to each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we're going to take here some scripts, and I'm going to drag and drop hold the folder in there so I don't have to, one by one, import each script. Yeah. Same way we imported the assets earlier, just drag yeah. and drop. Makes it... Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, and just to make sure. Okay, so what we're gonna do is here take the script uh, character uh, final we can actually use. Okay, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that script and open this here, and open here with Mono. Okay, you can also do it with uh, C, uh, C Sharp. Okay. In Visual Studio. Yeah. It's a C Sharp script, but yeah. you can open either one. Okay, and Okay, let me maybe explain it here. Okay, and uh, close the window for the moment. Wow, it's taking a bit to load. Yeah. So these are, this is a script you wrote ahead of time. Yeah, this is a script I wrote ahead of time. Um, okay, just let's take a bit time here. So tell us what the script's supposed to be doing. Uh, the script uh, is the character is moving forward, basically. Uh, it's just graphic, uh, physics that we're going to apply in the y and the x-axis, so the, the character can actually uh, move forward. Applying okay. a vertical force, uh, yeah. a, a force going in the horizontal, I should say, yeah. in the so, x. Yeah, so I'm just going to try to uh, work on it here for a second. Okay. And... Um, Get that script open. Yeah. And a script is just a component that you can add to any object, just like we add the animator component or the box 2D physics component. You just attach it to an object. Um, and so you can attach multiple scripts if you want as well. Yeah. So look here, I'm going to ex explain the script from here. Um, what we're going to do is basically, uh, the first thing is on collision enter 2D. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that script and I'm going to apply it to our character. And that's a function that's going to be triggered when a collision happens, it's built into Unity. It will trigger that function when the, the box 2D yeah. colliders. So what we're going to do, the moment it hits the ground, they're going to say it's grounded. Yeah. Uh, because That's just the Boolean that you're setting. Yeah, because later on, uh, what I want to do is here. This is really interesting. Um, we use here a function update. Mm -hmm. uh, a function update runs every frame. Okay, and we have a function fixed update here. Uh, why the difference is a function update runs every frame. 
fixed update runs a certain interval that we can set, and that's where we're going to use our phys uh, runs our physics in because it's really more computing, and that's why we're going to do it on a fixed update. Mm -hmm. Function update, okay, uh, is here when I press the fire button, and that now becomes really interesting because this is something that works multi-platform, cross-platform. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to put that on, on my Windows phone, when I touch the screen, it's going to trigger the fire one event. Fire one event. If I do it on my Xbox One, it's exactly the same. My fire one button will trigger this. Okay, so it makes it super easy. So that's an internal Unity command, fire one as a yeah. label for your input. Yeah. So, and this here, you can find it here. You can go to edit, and you can go to your input settings. Okay, and here you can see fire one is actually my uh, left control. Mm -hmm. Okay, with fire one, I have it declared also here as my joystick button zero. The same as my uh, when I'm on Windows Phone and I touch the screen. Mm. So you can add there your own inputs too. So it automatically will do a touch input then on touch devices. Correct. Excellent. Super easy. So uh, you don't, uh, for multi-platform, I want to create, want to make a, an Xbox One game. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's great. You don't have to have all these if statements. Of yeah. If I this control on that platform, this control on that platform, you can kind of have these tags that will work cross-platform so you don't have to code once. Yeah. So again here on the Collision Enter 2D, right? Uh, why we say here ground is equal true actually first is I want to be sure when my character that I only jump when my character is on the ground and here's what I do when I press the fire button and if I'm if I'm on the ground okay then I can jump otherwise I cannot jump mm -hmm. okay and then the fixed update when jump is true okay, what we here say is jump is true we will add a force to it okay a jump force now I didn't say like 10 meters or 50 meters or um, uh, yards, <laughs> I declared outside here. As a public variable. As a, as a public uh, variable, as a 10, okay? And what are the benefit of that? I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna take that script, and I'm gonna drag and drop it on my character, okay? That script is now applied to here, and I see a gem force of 10. So automatically, it says it uses all of the public variables, and it shows it to you in the editor so that you can tweak it. So having that jump force of 10, you're like, well, I wanted to jump a little bit higher. I can set it to 15 in the editor. I don't have to actually go into the code and tweak it. Yeah. This is one of the, I think, the strengths of Unity. The artists and the programmers and the designers can all uh, work together mm -hmm. right, thanks to exposed variables. And so as you can see here on our screen, uh, here we have the jump force. Now I can actually nicely slide this. Okay. And I can then tweak that. So press play. And we're going to press hit, click here. And we're going to jump. And we see our characters jumping pri uh, pretty high, so we can maybe put it to eight. Right, press play, okay, and then jump. I think jump enough, high enough. So I'm gonna put my character a little bit lower, right, so it doesn't uh, fall down in the beginning. Press play, the game start, my character's running, click, and I jump. Awesome. Okay. So I'm gonna put my character here nicely behind the screens, okay, and we're gonna put that in the layer uh, character, so that we can, our character nicely will come. As we did before. Yeah. So in the game, let's play. And there we have already the character running and jumping over the objects. Awesome. Super simple. But what we want to do is also, we want to have the correct animation playing, the jump animation. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the character here. And we go to the animator here and we have the run. We want to add a jump animation to it. Okay. So I can go to my scene here and I can go to my uh, art essence uh, for my character here and select all my images of jumping and drag and drop them in, should as done before. Okay. Now, do we want a second jumping character in the scene? We're gonna delete that, actually. Yeah, so we just want the one object, but the easiest way to make an animation is to simply just drag the images into the hierarchy, because it'll automatically give you that prompt, you save the animation file, and then you're done, and you can just remove that extra jump character you created. Yeah, so look here, I can show you again, and drag it in here, I can call it jump, you can overwrite this, the one we had done, and this image now, look, if I press play, of course, we're going to see uh, the jump animation here on this object. Okay. Press play. But we don't need it. We only need that animation file. That is actually nicely created here. Already saved in our folder, right? Yeah. Press access. So look, we're going to delete this now. Delete, yeah. And deleting the character from the scene does not delete the jump animation asset that's what we just created. Yeah, look here. Here you can nicely see the jump animation file. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go here to my uh, character again, go to the animator. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna steal actually take that animation file, that jump one, and drag it in here. Awesome! Now we have two animations on the character. Yeah. 
And this is really cool now. Look, if I want to go from run to jump, the only thing I have to do is look here. Make a transition from the run animation to the jump animation. Make an animation, a transition from the jump animation to the run animation. You get that 